So guys, next we will go through the implementation of Unix domain sockets to implement a server process. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the source code. So on your Linux terminal, make sure that you are connected to the internet. And to download the source code, type out the command git clone http go to github.com then cse practicals and server design so note the case sensitivity here and just press enter so this command will download you the folder called server design now go inside the folder and here you can see af unix directory so inside this directory you have client.c and server.c file so we will going to discuss the server.c file which actually implements the server state machine for unix domain sockets so guys i have opened the server.c file so we will go through the implementation details regarding unix domain socket implementation of a server process so you can hash include the standard header files here so unix domain sockets generally have a name so the first thing that you need to do is to create a constant or a macro which expand into a string and this string should be a unique within a system that is no other unix domain socket has already opened with this socket name so this is actually the socket name that we will going to assign to our unix domain socket that we will going to create right and the next has defined value is actually the buffer size that is 128 bytes is the buffer size which our server will going to use in order to receive any data from the client so before entering into the main function let me explain you at a high level that what is exactly the functionality of our server process so guys let me explain you the functionality of the server process that is what actually logical functionality this server process actually implements so we have a server process s right and suppose there is a client c1 so our server process first of all understands only the numeric values that is sent by the client so suppose the client sends the value 6 so the server process will add the value 6 to the to its local variable result and it will just add the value 6 to this result value now suppose the client c1 sends another message say 7 so the server process will execute this line and the result will be updated to 6 plus 7 right and again if the client process c1 sends the value 8 and subsequently it sends the value 8 9 10 and so on our server process will keep on adding the values that is sent by the client right so the server process is not responding back to the client it is just taking the values that is sent by the client c1 and it is calculating the summation of these values now the moment the client sends a special value 0 to the server the server will return back the result it has calculated so far so the server process will return the result which is 40 so this is the simple functionality of a server process that it calculates the summation of all integer values that is sent by the client c1 to the server and the moment the client c1 sends the value 0 to the server it means that the client c1 is now requesting the server to send back the result it has computed so far once the server returns back the result to the client c1 the server then closes the connection with the client c1 and is now ready to accept the new set of values from the from some new client so now that you know the functionality of our server process it will be easy for you to now grasp the server implementation or server code so going forward so directly we are now entering into the main function so the first thing that you need to do is to take the structure which is provided by standard c apis and this structure is struct soc addr underscore un 
and the variable of this structure type is name. So as we know that Unix domain sockets are actually uniquely identified by, by a name. So to hold the name of the Unix domain sockets you need to define the variable of this structure type. So here is the definition of this structure. So you can see that this structure has two members. The first member defines the address family. Address family means because you are using the Unix domain sockets therefore the value of the first member that is sun family will always be a constant value which is defined in C standard libraries and this value is af underscore unix and you have to use this value to create unix domain sockets and the second member is actually the name of the unix domain socket right so going forward we have taken some local variables we will discuss the use of these local variables as we progress into the discussion of our code here you can see that we have taken a local memory called buffer this buffer will be used by the server process to receive the data that is sent by the client as well as this buffer will be used by the server process to send the result to the client after computing the results now in line number 34 you can see that you are actually destroying the unix domain socket if it was already created using this name because uh, you cannot cr create two unix domain sockets with the same name so it might be possible that you are already running unix domain socket program on the same machine in another window and if that unix domain socket happened to have a same name then then if you execute this particular instance of the server process then this then this server process will actually destroy that particular unix domain socket which is already created by another program in the system and it will proceed to create a unix domain socket with this name again and this program will take the ownership of this unix domain socket so line number 34 is actually a precaution that you do not run or try to create two unix domain sockets on the same machine with the same name right now as we know that the first step of creating a unix domain server process is to create a master socket file descriptor or we, which we also called as connection socket so you can see in this flowchart that the first step that the server process do is to create a socket so in line number 39 you can see that we have created a master socket file descriptor and which we also call it as connection socket and the first argument to the socket system call is actually the type of socket you are creating so in this case it is always af underscore unix right the second argument defines whether the socket or the type of communication that your server process will carry out with the client is actually a stream based communication or datagram based communication so here in order to create a stream based communication you have to pass the constant value which is soc underscore stream if you wanted to implement a server that that does datagram based communication then you then you should have passed soc underscore dgram flag as the second argument to the socket system call then the third argument is not required and is not worth discussion for this course so the third argument you can always pass as zero or null so if the socket system call fails that then it returns minus one so this is the error handling code so by line number 46 we are able to create a master socket file descriptor right so now going forward the next step that the server process does is, is to do the bind now what does bind system call do so let us first get prepared to call a bind system call then i will explain what is the functionality of bind system call so remember the name was the variable of data type struct sock addr underscore un so we are just initializing the name variable here and this structure actually had two members as i explained the first is the family so family value is always af underscore unix and the second member is actually the name of the socket 
So using str and cpy, we are actually copying the name of the socket to this structure, right? 